I'm not denying the tragedy. I'm just saying it was a different name to the ship. What next? Father Christmas isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> the BBC have got a problem coming up. You know the BBC now cannot lie about anything. Yes. Well, I got taken to task some years ago because I talked to an adult and I said, oh, how old are your children? On, on air. I said, how old are your children? And he said, um, oh, five and seven. I said, oh, lovely. I said, you're going to be able to dress up as Father Christmas. And he said, yeah, I love that. And I got into real hold trouble. I got taken outside and they tried to give me a kicking on the basis that I'd suggested that Father Christmas isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> they, they live in a dream world, mm. some of these people. But I, I'm, I'm thinking of writing a, an email to the Director General of the BBC asking what our policy is on Father Christmas. We can't, we can't call it Father Christmas anyway in this no? country, can Why we? Is that? Why not? We have to call it Santa well, Claus. It might, might be what? offensive. Because otherwise the ethnic offensive minorities will get themselves in the knickers and a twist, <laughs> won't they? True. What's wrong with Father Christmas? I don't know, you tell me. Someone listening will know, he says. Now, conspiracy theories. Now, I want you just to... Yep, we were at four, JFK. Right. Now, I've got a really good one, which I happen to believe. Mm-hmm. And people will think it's in bad taste, but... Okay. Right, so just... Yep, I'm go. waiting. Yep, right. ready. Okay. In 1945, it is believed... that an atomic bomb was dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Uh-huh. And that that led to the Cold War, during which massive atomic weapons and hydrogen weapons were created that could have destroyed the planet. Mm-hmm. But I don't believe a single word of any of it. That the bomb, the, the bomb dropped? There is no atom bomb. No? There never was. And what there is, it can't do that. Okay. The whole thing is an unbelievable, enormous propaganda hoax. Oh. With both sides making it all up. I see where you're coming from. Because they think there's a possibility that the other side have got one. And the only way you can defend yourself against a, a hydrogen bomb, if there was one, mm. which there isn't, mm. is by saying that you've got one, and if the others let theirs off, you'll let yours off. Yep, yep. It I doesn't matter how point. many divisions of tanks you've got, if Washington did have an atomic bomb, Moscow is fucked. Yep. Mm. Mm. So they decided to say that they got one, and the Americans hadn't got one. So once the Russians said they got one, the Americans thought, well, maybe the Russians have got one. <laughs> and as we all know, so, war, war makes money. So, so mm. we'd better say that we've got a bigger one, which is a hydrogen bomb. Yep. And I believe this. Now, people say to me, OK, what about the evidence of the devastation at Hiroshima? And Nagasaki. Yeah, that was devastation. Mm -hmm. But did you know, did you know, that three weeks before the Hiroshima bomb, the Americans delivered even greater destruction to Tokyo? Right. Killed more people than Hiroshima. Devastated an area bigger than Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an atomic bomb. Right. It was just a massive firebomb attack. Okay. Using these new firebombs that the Americans uh -huh. had just invented. Uh huh. Did Japan <clears throat> want to surrender in 1945? Yeah. Mm hmm. Because they knew they were going to be overrun by the Americans and it was going to be a bloodbath. Yeah. Millions of Japanese men would have been killed. They would have sacrificed themselves, committed suicide. Japanese government knew that. They needed a reason to surrender. Because Japan doesn't surrender easily. No. You've got to have a very, very big stick You're very to proud. make a Japanese person say... A very proud nation, aren't they? Absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. they none of them would... None of the Japanese soldiers, sailors, whatever, would have surrendered. They'd have all fought to the death and then committed seppuku. So... Sudoku? Seppuku. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> terrific gag. <laughs> okay. Where were we? Can't resist it, can you? <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's very good. Yes. Yes. You haven't heard that so, one before, have you? Um, <laughs> not told that well. No. no, not told that well. Let's take a, a Skype call. Good evening. Thank hey, you for. You can't say Father Christmas because all the little black ghetto children in America get offended because they don't have fathers. <laughs> oh, it's kind of like Father's Day being the hardest day on a Harlem kid or something like that, you know, because they don't have fathers either. Um, hey, did you guys ever hear the conspiracy about uh, the American presidents? Every one of them is a Mason or something like that. And then 
It's pretty much determined years in advance before the election that who is going to be president or who can't be president because of some some Mason doctrine or something. Do you guys ever hear about that one? Nah. No. Nah. Yeah, nah. I've heard that. Some kind of bullshit. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's bullshit. That means Hillary's that bollocks then, isn't she? Yeah, well, exactly, you know, so, I don't know, I don't want to get that many soul brothers in there either. I was so, going to say, so Bar- Obama. Super Rock is out as well, yeah. Do you know what? Uh, yeah. I'll tell you one thing you don't know about your current president, Joe, What's that up? George W. Bush. What, okay. do you know something I don't know? Do you know what I color know, his is or something? I, no, 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 I've got something strange about George Bush, and I, I checked okay. this out myself, and I came across this myself. You know, like, all Americans like to know where they came from. Like, right, they, they yeah, want the to whole know, heritage thing, right. Yeah, and you all want to know you're Irish. Right. Because that's fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Isn't it amazing? There's 13 million Irishmen on St. Patrick's that's Day right. all you on the all streets with green a- fucking hair climbing on telephone poles. Uh, and if you can't be Irish, you want to be Scottish. Right. Or Italian's real popular Italian's in the States. Italian's like, you know my popular. fucking name. I, and I know someone in the mafia. Yeah, is that why you're driving a Chevette? This guy came up to me in a bar in New York the first time I was there, and he said, hey, you're English. That's great. I'm Scottish. And I said, uh, where exactly are you from then? And he went, Philadelphia! I said, well, how far back does this... I don't know! But he was Scottish. So, anyway, the one thing that none of you guys want to discover, okay, is that you're English. Right. Do you? Well, actually, I have that in my blood. I'm something like Czech, Polish, German, Jewish, and someone had an affair with a British mailman one time, so there's yeah. blood in me, too. Yeah, we're not, we're not no, talking about the women you've shagged, though, mate. If an, American, <laughs> yeah. if an American found out that he was descended from pure English stock, okay, he would be ashamed, wouldn't he? Well, you know, it's interesting, too. You know, we're coming up on Thanksgiving holiday, and, and I use that schlock to teach English, you know, uh, teach them about Thanksgiving, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. But, you know, what most people don't realize is, you know, most of the, most of the Europeans that came to America... They didn't come for religious freedom and all this freedom of bullshit and everything. You know, they came because in England and general Europe ran out of resources. And as England was building up its massive navy, what the fuck do you need to build a navy? You need wood to build ships. And really, they came to America for resources because they ran out of resources in England. Well, and a lot of people don't realize that either. And we talk about, oh, it's King James and freedom of speech. And blah, 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 blah. It's all about shit. It's a crock of shit. It's I a crock of shit. I love that phrase. You guys Brilliant. have got some really good phrases. A crock of shit. A crock well, better than bullocks. I mean, that's, I don't know. That's kind of a, I don't bullocks. know. I like some British phrases, but like bullocks. There's a bullocks. I don't know what the fuck you say. Bullocks. That sounds, that sounds gay. I don't know. Yeah, bollocks. Bollocks. Hey, I got the uh, movie pick of the week here. Uh, let's see. Commercial time. It's uh, Ginger the Abductors. Ready? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Freeze. That's Ginger. I thought you were there. I'll check you out. And that's Ginger. Ginger scores twice in the double hit show, Ginger plus the abductors. First, she blasts the fixers and the blackmailers in Ginger. Then she rips a girl selling syndicate wide open in the abductors. Ginger, her weapon is her body, and she puts it on the line. Rick knows you're in. You've got our teeth. There's not a man alive she can't take on, put down, or slice up. Ginger scores twice. See Sherry Caparo as the female James Bond in the Dereo production, Ginger plus the abductor. In color, from Joseph Brenner Associates, rated R, under 17, not admitted without parents. What, what, what is this? What is this? Uh, Ginger the abductors. I'm going to rent that on DVD right now. Okay. Gin- Ginger, as you know, is Cockney rhyming slang for a puff. What's that? Ginger. A ginger beer. Oh yeah, yeah, you, 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 yeah. You, we call them redheads. You call them gingers. Ginger That's beer. Cool. No, he's no, talking co- <laughs> Cockney <laughs> rhyming slang. You don't have rhyming slang in America. Yeah. Uh, no, not really. We have better things to do, like making fun of niggers. <laughs> 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 oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs>